morning. Uh, my name is Daniela Rust. I'm a roboticist, and I'm privileged to be the director of CSAIL, where our mission is to invent the future of computing and make the world better through computing. Now, you can't understand artificial intelligence at MIT without knowing a little bit about where we came from. So picture this. It is 1956, and a young Marvin Minsky decides to gather his friends, and then off they go to the woods of New Hampshire. And when they emerge from the woods, they announce to the world that they have invented a new field of study, artificial intelligence, the science and engineering of understanding how machines exhibit human-level intelligence in how they move, how they speak, how they see, how they play games, and even how they learn. Now, the founders of AI believed that machines could one day uh, exhibit human-level intelligence, and we at MIT have been pursuing this objective ever since. And with the MIT Intelligence Quest initiative, we're taking our efforts to a whole new level. Um, we continue to dream about creating increasingly more autonomous and more capable machines that are smart and obedient and support us with cognitive and physical tasks. Now, to make this possible, we need to solve the AI challenge, how to make intelligent machines. Specifically, machines are made of a body and a brain, and we need the tools to make the body and the understanding of how to create the brain. Now, the body may be inspired by nature, for example, a humanoid robot, but it may also be matched to, um, uh, to do the best um, possible tasks. So, for example, we could engineer the Roomba robot to clean your floors. Or the body could also be optimized for computation, for example, in the case of a GPU machine. The brain is the software, uh, the implemented algorithms that give the machine the intended capabilities. For example, to walk in the case of the humanoid uh, robot, to sweep the floors in the case of the Roomba, uh, or to crunch numbers in the case of a GPU. The function of the machine, um, the function of a brain, may be inspired by human cognition, or it may be developed as an engineered computation engine that optimizes the task. Right now, since uh, we know very little about the brain, the vast majority of the AI algorithms are driven by mathematics and physics. As we learn more about the human brain, we will be able to develop more nature-inspired algorithms. And within the MIT Intelligence Core, we are excited to advance both um, the engineered algorithms and the nature-inspired algorithms for the future intelligent machines. In the process, we hope to create um, new hypotheses that will help our uh, colleagues in cognitive neuroscience uh, uh, train new experiments, develop new experiments. Now, as a field, AI is very broad. AI researchers have explored many different strategies and problems over the 60-plus years of the existence of the field, and these are some of the sub-disciplines uh, that have emerged. As you can see, the field expanded gra greatly, but it still seems far from developing a computational account of true intelligence. However, the solutions are becoming part of uh, what we would say is a toolkit that enables us to create increasingly more capable machines. I think of these themes as the brain, the collection of um, fundamental implemented algorithms that give us support with cognitive intelligence by developing AI at rest and with physical uh, intelligence by developing AI in motion. And now I would like to give you just a couple of examples that show you where we are um, in this quest and, um, and where we hope to go. So progress is happening in three fields simultaneously. Uh, with artificial intelligence, we hope to give machines intelligence. We hope to enable machines to see, hear, communicate like humans. With robots, we put computation in motion and give, the, uh, give machines the ability to move. And with machine learning, uh, we hope to aim um, to learn from and make predictions using data. So let me uh, give you just a couple of examples of AI, machine learning, and robotics uh, at work, um, synergistically and all together. They uh, I will point to a number of um, connections between 
uh, the, the brain and uh, uh, physical machines. And there are so many more examples than I can give you today. So this is the MIT C-Cell Autonomous Car. Now, th its body is a Toyota car extended with sensors like laser scanners and cameras uh, for perceiving the world and, um, for, uh, and also controlled actuators like um, uh, actuated uh, steering, uh, brakes, and acceleration for moving in the world. Now, the video shows um, how this car learned from single images to steer like a human. And as you can see, uh, this car is driving very smoothly on a road it has never seen before. In fact, I would say that the car drives way better than my first drive, which I still remember. Now, the same sensor and actuator package and the same suite of algorithms can be ported to a wheelchair to turn that wheelchair into an autonomous uh, device, as you can see here uh, in the MIT C-Cell autonomous wheelchair. And the same technology uh, for autonomous driving can be mapped on wearable devices to help provide safe navigation and better situation awareness for blind and visually impaired users. Now, a wearable laser belt and camera combination can map the world locally and then describe it to the blind user. For example, uh, this, uh, describing a fabulous uh, window display on a braille buckle or um, triggering the presence of a moving obstacle or a friend or even something as small as a cat. So we can use this technology to replace the walking stick and provide blind and visually impaired people uh, with a greater experience uh, in, uh, in their surrounding world, to experience the world in much richer ways. But at the same time, these advances, we hope, are also inspiring cognitive neuroscientists to advance the understanding of blindness and even identify solutions to reverse it. While advances uh, in robotics are providing feedback to cognitive neuroscientists, advances in neuroscience are also providing feedback to roboticists. And here's an example. So recently, cognitive neuroscientists um, introduced a, a sensor called the EEG cap. So EEG caps have uh, 48 uh, sensors that monitor your brain activity. And in a recent work, uh, my group uh, was able to show that with such an EEG cap, uh, we can detect one particular signal that all of you make uh, when you notice that something is wrong. It is called the error potential, and it's localized. It can be detected uh, in about 100 milliseconds, and then it can be used to control a robot. For example, in this video, you see the use of the sensor to correct the robot's mistakes. Here, the robot is asked to sort um, paint can in a bin labeled paint and wire spool in a bin labeled wired. Um, the human observes, and when the robot randomly chooses a direct, uh, direction that is correct, nothing happens. But when the robot randomly chooses a direction that is incorrect, uh, the human triggers the error potential, we can, which can be detected uh, in real time and transmitted to the robot to correct its mistake. Um, so today, we can only correct simple tasks, like, uh, like these binary choices uh, that, uh, that robots make. But imagine a future where the same suite of capabilities can be used to control the body of a robot, uh, just like we control our own bodies. That would be an amazing future, because we would have a very intuitive and direct interface uh, to a machine. It will be a future where machines and people will be working together, collaborating together with machines supporting us with cognitive, and, uh, cognitive tasks and physical tasks. Autonomous driving will impact our world profoundly. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. And when we get the support of machines for mobility, we will ensure that our parents and grandparents have a higher quality of life in retirement, and all of us will be able to go anywhere, anytime. Machines supporting us uh, will enable a profound change in our lives, just like smartphones have enabled a profound change in our lives through computation. Thank you.